Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. I intentionally left a part of um, expressions of grace as we taught from Titus chapter 2, and I'd like to deal with that part tonight. And God helping us. So I call this grace ultimate expression. Grace. If you like, I can put a colon there, full colon, and then ultimate expression. I take my text from Titus chapter 2. I like to read from verse 11 to verse 15. Titus chapter 2 from verse 11 to verse 15. And I read, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God, and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us or buy us back from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. So much has been said about the subject of grace this far in the year. And I would like to start tonight by saying every beneficiary of grace needs to learn to intentionally show gratitude to God for the awesome grace he has made available to man. If you're a beneficiary of grace at any level, if you enjoy the grace of God on any level in your life, I'd like, you to, I'd like to encourage you to make a habit of it, make a practice of it, a culture of intentionally showing gratitude. Appreciate God for the grace. Because this grace, though it's available to all men, appears to all men, all men, in fact, most men are not able to access it. God, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. Jesus died to reconcile every human being back to God. But if, I mean, the stake, I mean, if we count the cost, if we check the numbers, we will see that presently many human beings, more than half, probably majority, are yet to come into this benefit. So for those of us who have received it, born again, spirit-filled, received a measure of grace, we need to make a habit of showing gratitude to God. We said to us, grace enables us to do several things in a manner that brings pleasure to God. And it may please you to know that Jesus is the one who paid the price, like we've said again and again. Jesus is the one who paid the price to make this grace accessible 
available and accessible to every one of us. Grace is made available to every one of us, like we've shared, to comprehend and to enjoy the kingdom of God, the blessings, the beauty of God in God's kingdom. Grace is made available to every human being and those of us who are beneficiaries to live above the system of the world, to live above ungodliness and worldly allure or worldly appeal. Grace has been made available to the recipients of grace to live by the standards of God. That is, with self-control, live in righteousness, function in every area of our lives in righteousness and in godliness. Also shared with us, grace is given to us to serve God. Someone should not be a carrier of grace who does not serve God. And serving God with your marriage, serving God in your marriage, serving God with your career, serving God in your parenting. Grace is given to us to serve God. And not just to serve God anyhow, serve God the way you like, serve God with an attitude of if they like, let them take it, if they don't like, let them drop it. The Bible calls us to serving God acceptably. So the standard for for acceptance or for acceptability is not determined by us, it's determined by the one who gives the grace. Grace is not given to run my show, to do your own thing. Grace is given amongst other things so that we may serve God. And in serving God, three qualities must be brought around the divine service. Serve God acceptably, serve God reverentially, serve God in godly fear. So, and when we talk about serving God, it's on various platforms. In the local church, the ushers should serve God acceptably. Serve God reverently with a heart of humility. Serve God in the fear of God. The musician should use the, the skills with the instruments to serve God acceptably. Serve God in godly fear. Serve God with reverence. That this gift that I have, this grace of God I have received, I need to use it to honor my maker. I need to use it reverentially. The one who has the grace to give, maybe in giving the tithe, maybe in giving to the less privileged on the platform of Mercy Board, maybe to give towards television ministry, to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom via um, the airwaves on television, that such a one recognizes that it's a grace to serve on that level. And so the one who gives, funds the gospel on any level, uses it to serve God acceptably. Friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Reverentially and in godly fear, we should never come to the level or come to serving God with an attitude that nobody sent me to, to earn this skill. Nobody sent me to school. Nobody developed this thing. I paid the price. Even though price is paid in a measure, there is an endowment of heaven upon that thing. That's what makes it acceptable in the sight of God. Skills are not enough for pleasing God. Uh, experience is not enough to please God. Expertise at any level is not enough to please God. So you will see many a times when God chooses people, raises them and begins to use them, he's not looking primarily for expertise or experience or um, the skills in themselves. He's looking for other qualities like yieldedness, like faithfulness, like serving God acceptably, serving God reverentially, serving God in godly fear. So that's on one, on one scope of it, on the platform of a local church and the things of the kingdom within the context of a local church, but then also beyond the, 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 the context of the local church. At your place of work, you need to serve God acceptably. 
and with godly fear. In your marriage, you need to serve God acceptably and in godly fear. In your career, in your scholarship, whatever you do, God has made it that every area of our lives becomes a platform for manifesting his glory. And we need to bring the grace of God in those areas of our, into those areas of our lives to serve God with those three uh, um, qualities in mind. Serve God acceptably, serve God reverentially, serve God in godly fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so having said that, I'd like to take this further. I want us to understand we're talking about grace to comprehend the kingdom, grace available to all men, grace to live in a manner that we can escape the corruption in the world through lust. We can live according to the standards of God. But you see, the purpose of grace goes beyond living. Living in the things of the kingdom, living above the system of the world, the purpose of grace goes beyond living. The purpose of grace goes beyond maybe serving God in the sanctuary. You clean the sanctuary, you clean the restroom. The purpose of grace is, I mean, goes far beyond that. Even though all those ones, they're vital parts of the purpose of grace, but the purpose of grace goes beyond, I mean, just living and then grace for transformation, transformation of the human character to become more and more like Jesus. I like to say this here, there is a big picture about grace. For everyone who comes to comprehend grace, like it's a divine enabling to walk with God, to stand, to walk in the standards of God, to please the Lord and to represent God, there is a big picture. Daily living in grace is not enough. The transformation grace brings upon our lives is not enough. It's expedient, but not enough. There is what I call a big picture. That the things we do on a daily basis should come together to crystallize a big picture. And there are two sides of this big picture, just like with a coin. One side of the, what I call the ultimate purpose of grace, on one side, is to fulfill divine destiny. No matter who you are, no matter what you do for a living. So when you begin to think of divine destiny, you see that life goes beyond daily living. Grace for each day, grace for each day. If the days don't accumulate to a big picture, you might not be maximizing the purpose of grace. You might not be coming to the ultimate desire for the release of grace. Grace is not just for living. Grace is not just to refuse the world. Grace is not just to live soberly, live a life of self-control, live a righteous life. Those are daily demands on grace. But it is to take us towards the big picture. If you are trekking, for example, towards Obibo, it's not enough to take a thousand steps and say you've taken a thousand steps. If they are not taking you in the direction of the ultimate picture, which in this case is Obibo, you are just taking a walk. You are just strolling. So grace, thank God for the living grace brings about. Living above the st systems of the world. Living within the standards of God. Serving to please in a manner that is acceptable in the sight of God. But I'd like us to understand big picture about grace. The ultimate purpose of grace. And on one side it is to be able to fulfill divine destiny. Mark it. And then when you turn to the other side of this big picture or billboard, it is also to be able to secure eternity. I put it this way for easy remembrance. On one side, it is to be able to, it is for fulfilling destiny. On the other side, securing eternity. Fulfilling destiny and securing eternity. And I'll break it down. <music>
and apply the truth content to your life, I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. So as we receive grace at any level, thank God for the things we do. You can just imagine in the natural, when a parent sends a child to nursery school, the mind is not just to have an education. The mind is so that the person becomes something of value, an asset to the society in the big picture. So whether you now spend 14 years in school at various levels, 20 years in school at various levels, if you finish from school and you are not achieving that greater purpose, you've defeated the purpose of scholarship. Likewise, grace. Grace is not just for daily living. Oh, I check my life every day. I'm living holy. I'm living soberly. I'm living in self-control. I'm living a righteous life. I don't take what is not mine. Beautiful. But you can live the next 50 years and you are not fulfilling purpose. You can just drift through life. Living righteously daily. Living holy daily. But when you look at the big purpose, you see, when God created you, he didn't just create you to live righteous, live holy. He created that your life altogether will be a precious building block in eternal dimensions. So I want to challenge you on that level in case you just feel, you're, you look at your life, you, ass, you access, uh, assess your life presently, and you make the basic marks of the kingdom. You make the basic marks of the functions of grace. You are living well. You give your money, your children, daily stipends to go to school. You provide food for your family daily. Beautiful. But I'm saying there is much more to your life. Let me tap someone close and say there is much more to your life. Don't defeat grace. Don't minimize grace. Make the most of this grace you have received. And I'm saying to us on a first level, it is to fulfill a divine destiny. What? is destiny is the reason why you are sent into the world you are not sent just to be a number amongst your parents children you are not sent just to be a member in a, a name on the register of your school you are not sent just to be a member in the headcount of the local church there is something divine about your life there is something glorious about your life what men measure about your life may just look like a little towel in a floor expanse but in heaven's death in heaven's programming this tile is a strategic portion of the whole of human destiny hallelujah and so i'd like us to begin to look into scriptures as we look into grace and the ultimate purpose of grace, it is to fulfill divine destiny. I want to begin to look in the lives of people in scriptures. As they engage the grace of God on their lives, you look at someone like Jesus. Jesus did not just go about every day healing people. All had to add up in the light of the big picture. He didn't just go around teaching on a daily basis just for the purpose of teaching or showing a profound insight. All had to add up. The grace, the ultimate purpose of the grace of God on Jesus was to save humanity from their sins. So if he taught, he healed, he cast out demons, he went from city to city preaching in contemporary languages on every TV station, in contemporary language, he goes to all the six continents every year preaching the gospel, and at the end of his assignment, he has not saved humanity from their sins, he has minimized grace. He will not have made a full proof of grace. So for Jesus captured in the essence of his birth in the message concerning his birth matthew chapter 1 verse 21 you will give you will conceive your wife will conceive and give give back to a son and he shall be called jesus for he shall save his people every person from their sin you look at into the life of paul Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Let's see that together. Paul, Acts chapter 9 from verse 15 to verse 16. He had an unusual life-changing encounter to the, on the way to Damascus. He saw a light more brilliant than the sun. The Bible says in, this, in its strength. <laughs> but see, because of time here, from verse 15 to verse 16. But the Lord said to him, that is now saying to uh, the certain disciple, Ananias, he said, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. To do what? To bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. 
For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Acts chapter 26, from verse 14 to verse, 16, to verse 18. And I read. And when we all had fallen to the ground, you know, the report there was from Dr. Luke who was giving a narrative. Or, but now Paul himself was giving the details himself to the leaders of Israel. And he was saying here, he said, and when we had all fallen to the ground, I had a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads or the bricks or the thorns. So I said... Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose. There is a divine purpose over your life. All your struggles to persecute the church, all your um, struggles to be well learned, was to try to comprehend your eternal destiny in your with your natural mentality. So I have appeared to you for this purpose. That to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, no matter their assault, no matter their context, no matter the oath they swear on themselves to take your life. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes. The eyes of whom? The Gentiles. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Five things you capture from these two passages that capture the unique grace on Paul's life. The reason why he was sent into the world. The divine assignment God had in mind. I want to carry out this assignment to Gentiles. I want to be, make a witness to kings. I want to make a witness to the children of Israel. And who will carry out this? And then he carried the grace for that assignment and implanted it in Paul. Five things I capture from these two passages from Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 26. When you look at this description in these two passages, the grace operational in Paul's life and its divine purpose are captured. Number one, to bear the name of Jesus before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. So you will see, when Paul taught, when Paul wrote, when Paul was writing even from prison, he was not just trying to do things to get popular ratings or to get the opinions of men. Eternity, destiny, that was, was why he was released into the world, was what was propelling him and compelling him to do those things. Number one, to Bear the name of Jesus before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. A second uh, expression of the ultimate purpose of the grace of God on Paul's life. To suffer many things for the sake of the name of Jesus. And I think probably like no other apostle. Yes, we say he, he labored more than they all. He had unusual insight out of the 27 books of the New Testament. He himself wrote 14. But do you know that he received peculiar grace to suffer many things for the sake of the name of Jesus? When time will fail me to begin to open up 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, up to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The beatings, the capsizing at sea, giving up for death, the stoning. He, to fulfill that mandate. So when those things were happening to him, he had received grace for it. I see that is why, as we go on here, we need to begin to recognize the grace of God on your life is not for daily routine. It's not just for daily living as a Christian. There is a peculiar call. There is a peculiar mantle of heaven on your life that you must wake up to. That you must rise to pursue. That you must rise to see it crystallized. So that by the time when Paul was running up his life, he was able to say, I have run the race. And it was not just any race, it was a race of grace. I have run the race. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hello friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. 
this one will bless you. Grace Explorers Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Praise God. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian, I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you had today and take them to heart. Search the scriptures if these things are so and live by them and live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself and demonstrate himself and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister, let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember Jesus, the son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him, may we follow him, may we worship and serve him. God bless you.